some of the, the highest blood lead levels ever recorded anywhere in the world are in crocodiles in KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. My personal journey with lead started in 2006 when I was in the United States on an exchange visit. And when I was at the Grand Canyon, I became familiar with the California Condor Reintroduction Program. And there I was quite shocked to find out that the biggest threat to the success of that program was the ingestion of lead from deer shot with lead bullets. And there they had to catch every condor every year and treat them for, for lead in order for that program to succeed. And I immediately started thinking about, well, if lead is an issue for condors in America, what's happening to vultures in Africa? And so we started implementing actions in the agency that I work for to try and reduce the potential risk of lead, even though we didn't have a huge amount of information on it. That led to more and more discussions with other uh, role players and uh, people that were co potentially concerned about the issue. And SA Hunters, and in fact, uh, Lazar Nell was one of the first people that I started speaking to. What we found was that in Europe and in America, there was a whole polarized discussion around lead and lead ammunition and its impact on the environment. And we decided we don't want to go that route in South Africa. So SA Hunters, together with other conservation organizations, came together and we started open and robust discussion about lead ammunition and its potential risks for wildlife. And then that led to us um, proposing the establishment of a more formal task team to, to look into the issue of lead in wildlife more generally. Because at that stage we realised it wasn't just about uh, bullets and vultures, but perhaps there's many other sources of lead that could be impacting on other forms of wildlife in the country and so we wanted to have this broader overview of what uh, the sources of lead are, um, what species of wildlife, what groups of wildlife are being affected and ultimately what we can do, uh, do about it. And so we proposed the establishment of the lead task team which was then established by the Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries as a subgroup of the National Wildlife Poisoning Prevention Working Group. Through this robust discussion some of the conservation agencies that immediately wanted a ban on, some, on the use of lead ammunition developed a better understanding of the challenges of switching from lead ammunition to other non-lead alternatives. In addition, I think ESA hunters developed an understanding that this was not just an effort by anti-hunting organisations to close down hunting, it was real concern about the potential impact that lead can have on wildlife. Lead is actually a really nasty poison. Much of the original research that was done was looking at the impacts of lead on humans. Um, and as a result of the negative impacts of lead on people, there's been a lot of regulations put in place over the years to remove lead from fuel, to remove lead from paint, from cosmetics, from toys, from fertilizers. There actually is now an overwhelming amount of evidence from all continents across an increasing range of species showing the, the negative impacts of lead on wildlife. Every bit of research that comes out is indicating that actually this is potentially more of a problem than, than we originally thought. Lead, um that are being used in sinkers, in the angling industries, also another source of potential risks for, for wildlife. Some of the, the highest blood lead levels ever recorded anywhere in the world are in crocodiles in KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. And, and that's very clearly linked to the ingestion of lead sinkers. So there is this growing body of evidence, but there also are key information gaps still, and, and that we acknowledge. And SA Hunters has been helping us develop a, a research priorities uh, document to understand where those key information gaps are and they're also helping us to help fill some of those gaps. We do not want to enforce change through legislation and bans. We would rather like to see people understanding the potential risks and then making an informed decision to reduce the potential impacts that they have for wildlife. So recently we've started engaging our members through meetings on the risks associated with lead and the use of lead ammunition, not only for themselves but for wildlife. In these sessions we explain to them what the research has shown in terms of risks for vultures if they ingest lead, 
Um, and we also advise them that if they use lead ammunition, how they must manage the carcasses to be safe for scavengers and for vultures, as well as to reduce the risk of lead ingestion for themselves. What we found is that once people understand some of these non-target impacts of lead, they're actually quite willing to reconsider the way they interact with the environment and the way they undertake their, their pastimes and their sports. Quite a lot of hunters are actually prepared to change the type of ammunition that they use ultimately to make sure that there's zero chance of any um, exposure um, of wildlife to, to lead and exposure of their own families and the staff to, to lead that might be in the carcass. One of the big challenges has always been making sure that lead-free alternative ammunition is available in the right calibers and at the right price. So the imported lead-free ammunition is more expensive and what we need to do is establish a vibrant local manufacturing industry for lead-free ammunition. Part of our initiative is to actually engage ammunition manufacturers in this process so that we make sure that we locally produce alternatives that hunters can actually buy.